Hi, this is Mark Weitzman, and welcome back to another exercise from the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Um, this particular exercise, I'll read it, it's written on the board here, 1626. A certain satellite vehicle is approximately a uniform circular cylinder of mass m, radius a, and length l, with l equals 6a. It is initially spinning at angular velocity omega zero about its long axis, but because of small internal vibrations due to a slight precessional motion at the start, energy is gradually transformed into heat. As a result, the satellite slows down, describe the only possible final state of rotation, and find the corresponding angular velocity omega f if as much energy as possible is transformed into heat. Assume that no outside influences are present. So this problem sounds like for those of you who might know, JPL is associated, Jet Propulsion Laboratory is associated with Caltech, and they did a lot of satellite launchings in the early 60s, and they were new at the game, and I suspect this happened to one of their satellites or something. So it's an interesting problem, and it also probably puts a lot of fear in the hearts of physics students because there's a lot of words, not that much equations, and you really have to understand what's going on and everything. So let me start, let's do, draw a diagram. And what we have is we have a cylinder. The length is L equals 6A. And the radius is A. And it's spinning about the long axis, omega zero, omega, what symbol does he use? Omega zero. Okay, so this is where it starts. And the only thing we really know is that something's going on, something's screwing around internally or something, and it's losing energy to heat. It's heating up internally and it's losing mechanical energy. So we have to find out the final state of, of this thing. So this seems like a hard problem. It seems like we need thermodynamics or something like that. But actually, we don't. All we need is one thing, conservation of angular momentum. See, it's. L vector at the start is like this. No matter where it ends up or how it ends up, it's got to have an L vector like this. Now, because of the symmetry of a cylinder, it's got two principal axes. One is the one we've shown here. That's the long axis. And then if we look at it from the top, it's a circle. And it has these two other axes, both the same length, A. These are the principal axes of rotation. Now, the energy of this rotating cylinder is simply um, L squared over 2i. Now, the angular momentum is conserved, so this doesn't change. We want the final energy to be as small as possible. We want as much to go into heat and so we want the mechanical energy to be as small as possible. So this implies we want the moment of inertia to be as large as possible. Now, you should be able to see that because this is a long axis, this has a minimum moment of inertia. But if we were somehow spinning about these axes, we would have the smallest possible moment of inertia. So the final position of the satellite is like this. And it's still going to be spinning. This is omega f. Its L will still be in the upward direction. So now it's going to be spinning round and round this way. And we just have to um, equate the initial angular momentum to the final angular momentum. Now the formula for angular momentum is L, we'll 
call it I zero omega zero is equal to I F omega F. So calculating the moments of inertia, that's just the basic exercise in calculating moments of inertia. I'm just going to write them down. Moment of inertia for I zero, it's just a cylinder and the extra length doesn't matter. So this is just equal to one half m a squared. That's the moment of inertia for this cylinder. And the moment of inertia when it's going around this way, it's not hard to calculate. What you do is you take a little like section like this and you use the parallel axis theorem. The moment of inertia about one of these axes is going to be like one quarter m a squared. And then you're going to integrate this little section, the mass. So it turns out I1 is equal to m a squared over 4 plus m l squared over 12. And here we just substitute l equals 6a. Plug into this formula over here and we'll get the final result. Omega f equals 2 omega 0 over 13. So there aren't very many calculations in this problem. It's a relatively easy problem. You just have to get what's going on and the fact that the angular momentum is conserved. And this is a really good problem to illustrate how in physics conservation laws put that the end here whether it's linear momentum, angular momentum, or energy, can solve problems much easier than trying to do it dynamically. So um, thank you very much, and I'll continue with some other problems that are sort of concept problems from the uh, Feynman exercises for the Feynman lectures on physics. Bye-bye.